Hello and welcome to another A Tippling Philosopher video with myself, Jonathan and MS Pierce, and someone else, uh, Tom Williams, coming to join us to talk about flags and vexillology. So that's pretty cool. It's a, a subject that I know uh, scant information about. Uh, although, if I remember back to when I was a child, I was pretty obsessed with flags and knowing flags, and I used to have like atlases where other people would have like cool things. I'd have an atlas like looking at flags and matching them with countries because, and I still am that cool. Uh, this is definitely true. Uh, so the, the flags, I think, for for many of us, have a, a special kind of place, as, especially if you, you've travelled a little bit. If you, if you've been lucky enough to do that, then you get to know these flags and the places you've been, and and all of you interested in pol politics and global stuff. Flags are just they're part of our. Um, you know, even thinking about the the Olympics and what have you, you know, flags are all over the place. They 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 hold a special place in many people's lives, and so we're going to investigate that, uh, learn about it through Tom and his expertise uh, and interest, and uh, hopefully you guys have some questions. To these, or there already are some questions in the live chat, um, so that's uh, fantastic. Uh, I'm just on the back of just a bit of news for the channel in general. Sorry, I haven't posted too much on this channel for some time. Uh, I've just came to, you know, turn on Tom Williamson's feed to my channel here uh, a bit later than usual because I was actually finishing off an article about life being discovered on another planet, possibly. Some news out about uh, discovering a certain chemical that could be a sign of life on a planet, 100 billion 120 light years away and that's pretty exciting then you start thinking oh i wonder if they got flags over there um uh, and anyway so uh, my my usual spam for the uh, episode is check out my last book that i wrote with uh, dr aaron adair aliens and religion where two worlds collide to find out about you know if there is life out there and what it might look like and you know stuff to do with that anyway that's enough preamble everyone should be here that needs to be here Tom, do you want to? Uh, we go back actually quite a long way, although we don't know each other too well. But um, you interviewed me years ago on oh, your geez. old podcast, Skeptic Canary. Um, so, you know, we do have a history, and you're now a member of my channel, ATP Geopolitics. So that's how this came about. Do you want to introduce yourself to the audience, and I'll shut up? Okay. Um, yep. Uh, my name's Tom. I'm kind of a self-declared expert on flags um everyone who knows me knows that i know a bunch of stuff about flags but i don't have any qualifications or anything like that i'm not sure there are any qualifications in vexillology but if there was i'd uh, i'd certainly go in for it um <clears throat> i have a website called flagforliverpool.org where i'm trying to campaign for the city of liverpool where i live to get a better flag um although there's a bit of a paradox when it comes to getting uh, a flag for somewhere. It's, the larger the place is, the harder it is to convince your authorities to have a flag because there are dozens of like English villages and hamlets really, which you've got like a hundred people living there and they have a flag because there'll be one person who goes to the parish council and goes, I think we should have the flag. And everyone else goes, oh, brilliant. That's interesting. We were just going to talk about bin collections. Yeah, flag. Okay, great. Um, whereas if you've got a big city like Liverpool, you'll have, you know, half the city going, it needs to be red. The other half going, it needs to be blue. And they have a big fight and you, know, you can't get anyone to decide anything. Um, so uh, when it comes to, when it comes to uh, flags, that's, my kind of contribution, you'll often find me hanging around on flag forums, on Reddit, uh, places like that. Oh, there you go. Uh, the website's still working, which is good. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of nepotism. That first design that everyone sees first, that's mine. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I think that works. Because one of the things we will talk about is... Um, uh, flag rules, like like rules for good flag design. And uh, that, for the most part, are based on something called the law of tincture, which we'll talk about later. That Whereas flag that, is a bit garish to me, and there, there's something uncomfortable yes. about so much yellow. That doesn't obey the rule of tincture. That's got yellow on, uh, that's got yellow on white. 
So we'll we'll have a have a think about all these ideas, and we may even flip down that page to see which ones work and which ones don't according to your rules. Uh, so thanks for for coming on, Tom. Um, do you, do you want to start the ball rolling then in terms of where where should we start thinking? I mean, what in, just as an aside, people have already mentioned Sheldon uh, Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. Uh, he was evidently, I've not watched The Big Bang Theory, but he was evidently <coughs> interested in flags. And I know my mate mentioned that on Facebook when I talked about this earlier. So, uh, yes. Um, anyway, take us away, Tom. Well, you'll never guess what my first slide is. Uh, because because I get it all the time. I, I, I think when you last did a live stream and said that we'd be doing this, about three or four people just suddenly went, Sheldon Cooper, straight away. And if you haven't seen Sheldon Cooper, um, the fun with flags thing, it, it it's pretty good. I'm, I, I've got to say I'm not a massive fan of the Big Bang Theory, uh, but they do have the flag thing uh, nailed. But one thing I should say is that my motivation for being interested in flags isn't just memorizing loads of stuff. I mean, I do know what a lot of flags look like, obviously, um, but there are thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of flags in existence because pretty much anyone can have a flag. Obviously, countries have flags, but, you know, subdivisions of countries have flags. So American states, British counties, French département, Japanese prefectures, and then below that, different cities have flags, villages have flags, um, of sexualities have flags, you've got all the pride flags, um, and even people have flags. Um, I've, I've been to a flag conference where someone bought in his own personal flag just to, just to show off. So, so I'm much more interested uh, in... <laughs> I'm much more interested in the, um, you know, in the history and the politics and the, you know, geography behind flags. So I'm not interested in just memorizing the wall. I, I could, because my main thing, what I always tell people with flags is that flags tell stories. You look at any flag and ask, why does it look like that? You will find something interesting about what the flag represents because no one goes oh we need a flag uh, or I, I i don't know bit of red bit of blue bit of green there you go it always means something um so yeah but, but that is the difference between myself and sheldon cooper much as i like fun with flags i don't study flags just to get a load of knowledge i i i, I like to know what they mean and the stories behind them so yeah, that's that's me and Sheldon. Um, I saw a question pop up. What was that? Yellow submarine for the flag for Liverpool. For the yeah, Liverpool flag. It's not a bad idea. If anyone wants to design that, all the uh, details are on the uh, flag for Liverpool.org website. Dot um, net. Oh, it's dot net nowadays. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, don't go to dot org. Something bad happened there, which I won't go into. Um, so next slide. So yeah, a little bit about myself. So um, on the right, on the on the right there, that's my grandfather. Uh, my family name is Williamson, and my I'm not entirely sure what my great grandparents were doing because they named my grandfather William Williamson, uh, or 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 Bill to his friends. And he was quite an avid collector of flags. Whenever I used to go to their house as a kid, there were flags everywhere and he passed away over 20 years ago and when he did um, my grandmother said you like flags don't you do you want his flags and I, oh yeah please and uh, so they're currently in my house and um that is like 95 percent his uh his his collection and what's weird is that i only worked out exactly what the collection was after he died because I was going through them and I saw quite an unusual one which was uh which I recognize as the flag of Curacao which I think is a Dutch overseas uh, territory in the Caribbean somewhere it's where the um it's where the liquor bowls blue comes from and uh that's quite an old flag to have in a collection so so I asked my grandma did you ever go on holiday to Curacao? And she went, oh, yeah, we did. That was a great old day, Rob. And then it clicked because 
they're all places that you can go on holiday. There's, um, I think you can see St. Lucia there. Obviously, there's America. Um, but it was quite an eclectic collection. Hopefully, this, uh, uh, okay, the animation. <laughs> so you've got Pride Flag on the left, Soviet Union in the middle. Um, he must have gone there in the very narrow space of time, which I think was between 1990 and 91, where Western tourists could go there in the sort of last dying breaths of uh, the uh, 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 Gorbachev premiership. And then a really horrible one, the, um, uh, the Confederate battle flag. And I also got his, um, he, he had a little book of flags and on the Confederate flag, he'd just written, south usa so he was going along with a really common misconception um at the time and it's still true today but that that is just the flag of the american south i mean if you know your history it's it's anything but and it's an absolutely horrible flag but i just thought it was fascinating that that was on the same stand as the soviet union and uh what at the time was the um you know sort of universally acknowledged pride flag. That's pretty old. So that's probably from the 80s or 90s, I would imagine, that flag. Uh, what's next? Ah, yes. So now I've had a little bit about me. I just want everyone watching to have a little bit of a, a think about what's a flag for? Because I've got a one-word answer. What do you think? Well, I would say identification. And you would be right. That is exactly what it's for. Way. Hey. Right. Like you read my mind. Yeah, well done. You get all the internet points for that. <laughs> yes, because um, this, this is something I keep arguing about for some reason with people on the internet, is um, people will go, oh, I've, I've, I've redesigned a flag. What do you think? And they'll have taken an existing flag and put on a load of pictures and a coat of arms like someone did that with the flag of France. Someone went, I've redesigned the flag of France. And I know it's just people trying to have a good time or but, but I always get angry. I, I, I just go, why on earth did you redesign the flag of France? It's the most I iconic, identifiable symbol in the world. <laughs> I guess it's like we need more meaning on there. Like, you know, those colours don't mean enough. We need to put other things that identify other stuff to do with France. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's it's like that they're, they're well meaning, but that but they're missing the whole point of having a flag, which you know, number one, identification. I did I did a little uh, quiz with people um, when I did a talk uh, for uh, skeptics in the pub online, which you should check out. It was very interesting, and I had slides where I'd put up a flag for zero point one of the second. And ask people to identify it, and everyone could, you know, for, for, for flags like um, the UK, France, Ukraine, uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, we'll get onto that uh, <laughs> later because that annoys me. Because although it stood for absolutely, you know, absolute horribleness, the flag of Nazi Germany, design-wise, it's brilliant. <sighs> but we'll get onto that later. Uh, what's my next slide? It is oh yes so so this is what i was talking about um in terms of what a flag's for because what people keep forgetting is a, a flag is not just the design it's a physical object it's a piece of cloth so there with that flag it's what's called at rest so there's no wind but even though it's at rest you can you can sit you can tell what flag it is really really easily i mean obviously it's sorry obviously that flag is the american flag and you can tell that even though you can't see all of it you can just see a bit of it hanging down so that's one of the reasons why the american flag is such a good design because you can you can work it out even when it's what even when it's at rest um so another thing to take into consideration uh, when you're designing a flag is that often it'll be small, that should be small and or far away. If you think of um, emojis, often they're tiny. 
And if you've got a really complicated design, you're not going to be able to turn that into an emoji. So, and you do need to be able to identify flags at a distance because you should look up and go, oh yeah, I know what that is. That's France or Britain or whatever. Um, so yeah, you have I to guess you know if you if you want to have it useful, you you want to be able to see what it is on a Twitter message, right? On a, on a yeah. tweet or an X. Uh, so yeah. Oh, let's not get started on that. <laughs> I'm I'm no longer on that platform. I'm I'm relying on you to report on what's going I'll, on. I'll do the I'll do the daily work. Yeah, exactly. So another thing that you want flags to be is distinct from each other. So if you've got two flags that are nearly identical, um, so on the left, you've got the absolute classic of this. You've got Romania and Chad. They're in completely different parts of the world. Um, the flag of Chad is based on the flag of France because a lot of the former, a lot of the former French colonies in Africa, they're not that creative with with their flags. It's just a French trick law with some different colours. And with Chad, it's just yellow instead of white. So it's it's almost identical to the flag of Romania, but it's a slightly different shade of blue. And on the right there, you've got two countries that border that border each other. You've got the Netherlands at the top and Luxembourg beneath. And Luxembourg just looks like a Dutch flag that's been through the wash too many times. It's it's just a bit faded. So yeah, wh wh when you're designing a flag, you want it to be distinct from other flags. You, you, you don't want people going, oh, is that Chad or is that Romania? Let me take a closer look. Um, so that's one of the rules for good flag design. And another thing is, don't be annoying. Don't be, <laughs> don't be cocky. So this is the flag of Paraguay, and they have, uh, if I remember rightly, the presidential seal on the front, and the seal of the treasury on the back. Other than that, it's pretty much a Dutch flag. Um, <coughs> well, upside down Dutch flag. Um, so. This gives flag manufacturers a headache because to make this flag, you have to make two separate flags and then sew them together. So, so whenever someone has to make a, you know, a flag of Paraguay, they go, oh God, right, okay, here we go, right, two flags stitched together. Flag of Nepal is terrible in that respect. Um, yeah, because uh, I've. I've <laughs> I've given a talk on uh, on flag ratios. That's, that's, that's not something I've got on these slides, but um, uh, one thing that's set in flag designs is their ratio. So how how tall it is compared to how how wide it is. And most flags are three by five or two to three. Um, whereas the flag of Nepal, you basically need a degree in advanced calculus to, to work out the uh, ratio of flag of Nepal. It's, uh, it's uh, ridiculous. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind if you're trying to make a flag that's nice to uh, nice to look at. Yeah, and, and there's, there's a whole subreddit dedicated to bad Nepali flags. <laughs> Because I mean, those see... that's that's like the angles, like everything about that flag is just weird, like or or you're able to get it wrong, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And bef and up until the 1960s, um, it was even weirder because the sun and the moon had little faces, <laughs> like, like like little smiley faces, essentially. Um, hey, yeah. Hey. So so yeah. God, the Flag of Nepal, everyone goes, oh, isn't it cute? Is, isn't it, you know, isn't it different? Doesn't stand out. And it's like flag manufacturers are going, it's a monster. If, if you know, <laughs> if you if you make flags and you have to make a flag of Nepal, you have to pretty much sack off the rest of the day because because you're going to, to do it properly anyway. Um, uh, some people go, oh, just a white flag with the flag of Nepal. They'll never notice, be fine. Um, another thing that you have to do is you don't make the edges white. Uh, I've included the flag of 
Russia here. Um, and you've got uh, Poland at the bottom and you've got Cyprus top right and uh, Qatar, where the last World Cup was, unfortunately, um, in the bottom right. Because if we see what happens when you make the background white, those flags disappear. And often you'll be flying a flag, it'll be a cloudy day and those flags just disappear on on white clouds. Was the Russian flag just, uh, a, they took the uh, Dutch flag and just Ooh. messed around with it? Yes, yes. We'll, we'll be coming on to that later. I've got a whole all right. section covering, you know, the current U conflict in Ukraine and all the flags behind that. Um, and one, one rule is don't add writing because no one's going to read it. E even me, if I walk past a park or a government building or something and there's a charity or some organization flying the flag and it's got writing on it i will try and work it out for maybe five seconds and then give up and so yet yeah, yeah there's absolutely no point adding writing because no one's going to read it um I've, 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 I've got as an example i've got the flag of california which is my favorite it's so bad it's good flag because it disobeys all the rules. It's mostly white. It has a complicated picture of it on it. It has writing, and the writing's not even accurate. <laughs> because California Republic is what California was before it became a state. And they just never bothered to change the flag. Um so so yeah. <laughs> it, it, just a bad flag. Well it, it, it's it, it's not even that, it's just it it, it Everything about that flag is bad, but I love it because of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's so bad it's good. Right. And this is something I mentioned earlier, that the law of tincture. Now I, I, I have such a time with this on flag forums because so you know, people put up designs and say, What do you think of this design? And I'll say, ah, it doesn't follow the law of tincture. And people get, but law of tincture doesn't matter. That's only an heraldry. And then, because I, 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 I did a little experiment a few weeks ago. Um, I said, um, yeah, it's good, but you're missing contrast. You've got dark colours against dark colours and light colours against light colours. And everyone went, Ooh, okay, good point. Not realising that's what the law of tincture is. So it's no metal on metal and no colour on, co on colour. It does come from her heraldry. And in heraldry, your metals, there's only two of them, gold and silver, um, or and argent. And in, <laughs> that's my French. Oh, that's beautiful oh. French, but I've got a degree in French and I can tell you that was awesome. <laughs> argent. <laughs> um, so so uh, colour-wise, gold and silver equate to yellow and white. So you don't have yellow on white. So that's your metal on metal. And your colours are pretty much everything else. So the examples I've got are uh, red and blue and, and purple and green. Um, the colours do have names in heraldry, but I can never remember what they are. I think azure is blue. Um, anyway, you, you, you can look them up. They're, they're mostly based in French, actually. I, I, I think green is there. Um, yeah, so so if you have metal on metal, you have gold on silver, um, it looks horrible, it looks gaudy, it, it, it looks like you've got a hell of a lot of wealth, but you don't really know what to do with it, like, like you haven't got any taste. Um, hence, hence why I've gone for uh, a picture of the interior of Donald Trump's building. Um, I, d I, d I did think of, um, making an online quiz once which was which was um is this the interior of the donald trump uh, building or is it uh, an interior of uh, colonel gaddafi's palace because they both suffer from the same problem which is having a lot of money but absolutely no taste so so that's what metal on metal is 
Can I? Can we go oh, back yeah. to just to no, not back to that. Um, th there was just a question to do with the, the white. I know it's from a previous slide. Greybeard says here. Uh, see, not making the edges white is one of the rules I knew about, and I wonder how that affects the Japanese flag's image. But the Japanese flag is instantly identifiable. So it's. Yeah. It, I would argue it is a great flag because actually everyone knows it, but they probably know it because it's like such a different design because there are not many with circles just on their own it's just that's that's the identifiability of or, 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 yeah exactly, that, or exactly. The, the, the flag of japan red circle on a white background and everyone knows that so it, you, you couldn't get much more simple than the than the flag of japan and if so you they just, can get away with it being white and white just because you know you yeah, just know it yeah and 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 um yeah, you, you, a lot of the time you don't even need Baroque, the white background, just a red circle. Yeah. It's just like red circle. What country does that make you think of? Japan, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so I want to address this whole issue between heraldry and vexillology because there's this confusion about what the term on means. So, you know, no metal on metal, no colour on colour. And because it originally comes from heraldry, where things are um, three-dimensional. So you so in a heraldic coat of arms, you can literally have something on top of something else. Whereas you can't with flags, they're they're two-dimensional. So with flags, it is a bit different. So for example, flag of the USA, you've got blue touching red, but because if you look at it in a certain way, you can sort of think of um, the canton, the, the, the top right, uh, where the stars on the, on the blue are. You can sort of, if you think about how your brain processes that image, you can, you can sort of think of a canton as distinct from the rest of the flag. So you've got your red and white stripes, and then over somewhere else, you've got your blue. So in the flag of the USA, you do have red on the blue but because of how the flag structured it it really doesn't matter so much so yeah i mean that looks like to, to me you put blue on the red there you got the red and white stripes you whack the blue uh blue on as like an extra i what what yeah i wonder if there was ever like you would think there'd be lines underneath that and whether there was any I don't know, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just like, <laughs> my head's just going off into a random direction there. But yes, no, carry on. <clears throat> yeah, sure. So, so so, actually, one thing that is quite noteworthy about the um, flag of the USA is that it's a good job that they started off with 13 states because 13 is a really nice number when you've got two stripes. Because if it was an even number, um, then the last stripe would be white. And that wouldn't look nearly as nice and if you swapped it round so it went white red white red instead of red white red white that wouldn't look as good because you'd start with white and end with white it's much better to start and end with red because you just so that you don't have white along the edge yeah good point yeah um oh yes what one one thing i should say about the american flags because um, the evolution of the American flag was, <laughs> I, I find fascinating because they started off with the, um, with the continental colors, which is basically their current flag, but with a union Jack in the canton, but they made the union Jack square. And I don't know why they did that because the union Jack has never been square, uh, in, in, in any form. But they quickly realized, well, hang on a minute, we're fighting a war against the British. Maybe we shouldn't have um, their flag on ours. Which I, I was just going to say, you're clearly not a purist when it comes to flags who say you can't say the Union Jack. You have to say the Union flag. It's only the Union Jack when it's on the jack. We'll get to that. We'll get yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, I figured you'll be uh, talking yeah. about that. Um, yeah, so... so one of the most important iterations of the uh, flag of the USA was that um, after they had 13 states, they admitted two more. can't remember what they are off the top of my head. 
Um, so they went, okay, we'll add an extra star and we'll add, uh, sorry, we'll add two extra stars and we'll add two extra stripes. So you have 15 stars and 15 stripes. And that iteration, and only that iteration, it's called, is, is the Star Spangled Banner. That refers to a very specific um, American flag. The one on the screen at the moment, not the Star Spangled Banner. And that was the flag that was flying above Fort McHenry when the British bombed it and uh, the guy wrote a, a, a poem about it and that ended up becoming their anthem. Uh, but after that, when they admitted more states, they went, hang on a minute, we're getting a silly number of stripes now and the 13 look better and look better anyway. So we'll go back to 13 stripes and we'll just add an extra star uh, for each new state. And that's how it's done. That's how it's done to this day uh, to give one of, you know, one of the most recognizable images in the world, really. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent there because, because I was talking about the law of tincture. Um, so, so this is so this is the current guidance that's given out by uh, NAVA, the North American Vexillological As Association, and the British equivalent, the Flag Institute, um, which says when you're designing flag uh, rule three point two says contrast is important. Use light colours on dark and vice versa. That's a very very nice one sentence summation of what the law of tincture is, without saying follow the law of tincture because that tends to <laughs> get people into arguments um yeah um i've i've i've, I've been to a flag institute meeting but, but, but that was that was pre-covid so um haven't been to one in a while um yeah just hanging out with fellow flag nerds brilliant <laughs> um yeah, so, so this is the way I always sum up good flag design. Um, it's called the face paint test. At the World Cup or any other sporting event, can you paint a flag on someone's face? And if you can, then chances are it's a good flag. Well, okay, so here, here's a question. Is a Brazilian flag a good flag? Because it's got a bit of complication in there, yet it is really recognisable as well. So it, it succeeds yeah. in certain areas, and you know, as you can see, the top left there—that's straight away. I know that's a Brazilian flag, but that's yeah. the power of those colours, I guess. Yeah, with, with 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 the face painting, you can get away with sort of scribbling a bit of white for the stars and the text, as long as you've got green field, yellow diamond, blue circle. That's the flag of Brazil. Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough. So yeah, you. Yeah, the flag of Brazil you can get away with simplifying, which is which is a nice thing to do in itself. So, um, yeah, said I get onto the flag of the UK. Now, can you spot the deliberate mistake in that picture? Is it to do with exactly where the red diagonal lines are? Because that's always a bit of a a, a funky one. I always, when I was younger, I just thought it went straight through the middle of, of both the, of, of the white, like, diagonals, mm -hmm. and of course it doesn't. I mean, I think yeah. that is, I think those diagonals are accurate, but I don't know, you'll tell me. Uh, you, you, you are right in that it's something to do with, with the diagonals. Like that, as it is on screen, the flag is upside down. Right. So it's meant to look like that. So if I just go back between them a few times. Oh, my God. You're making me go mad because I, when you did the second one, I thought that looks horrible. Is that what it's supposed <laughs> to be? It's just what um, you're used to looking at. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the way the scouts remember it, the scouts are always broadside top. So, if you look at the top left, you see the broad white stripe on the yeah. top, and after that, it's got rotational symmetry. So, you start with the first quarter. You rotate it to get the second quarter, rotate it again, and then again, and yeah. then you've got the whole flag. Right. When I'm, I'm staring, I've been staring at that flag. This is really interesting, actually, because that's I'm staring at the the Union flag or whatever you want to call it, like for, for like for the longest I ever have done, and it's starting to look weirder and weirder and odder and odder. I don't know if that's a word. More and more odd. <laughs> Just uh, 
it just looks really asymmetrical and Parts, a little if, bit uncomfortable. Yeah, um, but you will notice one thing about it. Uh, remember, I was talking about the law of tincture earlier, which is no yeah. metal on metal, no color on color. So that flag contains two colors and one metal, and at no point did the colors come into contact with each other. So the blue and the red never never come into contact yeah because that flag obeys the rule, rule of tincture yeah. um yeah and with the whole union flag or union jack thing this is the opinion of the flag institute either is fine it's like if you want to be technical historically you would say it's only a jack if it's, if it's on a ship and officially it's a union flag but because the Union Jack is in such common use, like if you said, if you said to someone, "Oh, what's the flag of the UK?" It's the Union Jack. They'd have to be very, very disagreeable. I'm trying to be polite here, but they'd have to be very... so. This is oh, I could bore people here because this is about um, the evolution of language. So mm. what, dict dictionaries are descriptive these days, not prescriptive, which means l dictionaries, when they're written now, they describe describe how we use language. They don't tell us how to use language. So you'll get new words coming into the dictionary. You'll get words like literally is now a contronym, which means it means opposite to what it actually originally meant. So now people use, oh, he was literally on fire on the football pitch. It's like, no, he wasn't. He's metaphorically on fire. He wasn't literally <laughs> on fire. But because people use it in that way, it's now some dictionary definitions have the, the kind of metaphorical use as a definition for the literal use. So in other words, words change and, and, and we move on and language evolves and, you know, get over it. So you have your purists to say you can't call it Union Jack and everyone else is like, well, I know exactly what you mean. Um, mm. So, you know, why bother? So yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, exactly, that's and, and it's 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 not like you're calling it a fish or anything like that. You 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 you're calling it. You're using a term that everyone recognises. Everyone knows what you're talking about, and you would have to be unpleasantly pedantic to you know call someone out for calling it the Union Jack. Um, yeah, that that that's that's the view of the of the Flag Institute, which. And they have the final say, basically. This is probably a discussion that most people watching who aren't from the UK will be going, I never, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, yes. So, so I thought I'd uh, just show what I think are some good flags. Uh, so, in the top left there, you've got Republic of Ireland. And I think that is one of the best flags out there because not only does it obey the law of tincture so you've got color metal color i know that orange isn't really in heraldry but it is dark enough to be distinct from the white and um uh, you know because because people keep talking about sectarianism when it comes to ireland that flag is an attempt to you, you know, it was originally an attempt to promote peace because you've got green for Catholicism, orange for Protestantism, and white for peace between them. So, wow, I didn't even I didn't know that. That's a lovely bit. Of, that's a lovely nugget. Thanks, Tom. That's right. Um, top right, you've got Finland. So I, here's my issue with Finland. Right, it's it's a good flag, but the problem with the Nordic flags is that they all follow the same design format. And so, therefore, yeah. the, context, the context to those flags is to try and confuse people. I mean, I'm not confused by them, but but they have, <coughs> you know, though though you've got four variations of the same kind of design. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, but but because they're all because they all have the same um, basic format, that's how you know they're all related. I so, so it, it, yeah, yeah, that's a really great great argument, which is a load of rubbish, mate. That's actually the strength, <laughs> which means the, you can identify that whole region by by their format of the flags. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got obviously France on the bottom left. I've already told my French flag um story. But um I was in Can France. I just say Robert Amity here says I like the Union Jack flag of the British Empire. Just have it all in there. <laughs> have it all. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Actually, it's very interesting that someone's mentioned British Empire because 
one of the things I always say is that flags mean different things to different people. That's obviously, the obviously the Union flag very very negative for a lot of people, and very positive for for others. You, and interesting. So there's been a history of the the Union flag in the UK. So I don't know if foreign people know this, but in the UK, it became slightly stigmatized uh, and became associated with like right wing nationalism quite a bit. And it kind of got a bit of a bad rap. And then we started seeing the George, St. George's Cross come to to the to the f forefront in in and uh, you know each of the countries the scottish flag the saltire and, and so on and so forth but, but we you know the union flag has has had different time at different times had a different um reception even within within the uk and then you know it means a very as you say like the union flag in scotland is kind of like well if you're in a certain part of glasgow happy days if you're in another part of glasgow that ain't cool mm, yeah absolutely absolutely um interesting you mentioned scotland but it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a nice little nugget of what, that, that i like to tell people uh back in i think 2003 it was but i might be wrong there um but about that time the scottish government made a change to the uh scottish flag in that they made it a slightly different shade of blue they made it a bit lighter and the effect of that is the blue that's currently in the Scottish flag is not the same blue that's in the Union flag. Ah. So they've made that little trying to distinction be different, there. difficult, eh? What, yeah. what about the, the so the Irish flag? There is a different dimension. Are, are there set yes. dimensions? I mean, are these prescribed? They are. I mean, who, right? Okay. They are. They are. The, the The Irish Constitution says that that flag is twice as long as it is tall, which makes right. it one makes it one to two which isn't that nice of a ratio to work with, to be honest. Um, three to five is much more standard. M most countries' flags are three to five. Um, right. Quite a few are two to three, although the Union flag is also one to two. Um, is it? Yeah. But it's I, got I, a lot going sideways, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's, that, that's another thing that I point out to people. That the ratio of the Union flag is one to two, and they go, "Is it?" Oh, never noticed. And then they look at it and go, "Oh, yes, there it is." You know, it's one of those things you can look at yeah. something for yeah. years and years. That's true. Actually, I'll be one of them. Yeah. Mm. Flag of France. Uh, I've I've included it because it is, you know, your archetypal tricolor. Really, um, it might have been the first. Tricolor. I'm not sure if it was, but um, uh, I, I was in France um, not that long ago. It was sort of like my first uh, trip abroad since uh, since uh, since uh, my brain issues. And it was it was just nice to be in a different country, and you know, because they're fairly proud of the flag of their flag, mm. France, and you know, you can see it all over the place. Um, but yeah, that was such a a, a weird trip because um my dad says uh, uh my dad told me uh you like you know history and like russian history don't you and i went yeah well i found a vineyard called van du Sar, which was a vineyard themed on nicholas ii of russia so so i went there and i just went this is really weird i'm i'm, I'm in i'm in a vineyard in the south of france and there's um and there's you know, portraits of Nicholas II and his wife and child everywhere. And I thought, this is weird. Fortunately, the guy who's, who was there spoke perfect English and he told the story by the vineyard because I was expecting to see, if I was going to see any flags there, I was expecting French flags. Um, uh, and, 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 he, and he said that uh, the vineyard, when it, oper when it was operating in the early 20th century, late eight, uh, late 19th century, um, Nicholas II ordered a big vat of wine from it. It then got destroyed in the First World War, and someone resurrected it in the 70s. And they thought, right, we need a we need a hook, we need something, you know, a theme essentially. And they went back through the history books and found that um, Nicholas II had ordered a load of wine from them. So uh, they went, yeah, that'll do. 
Van der Sar. And of course, everyone went, wasn't he a Dutch goalkeeper? Yeah, my brain was like Van der Sar, Van der Sar. Come on, I know that. I know that. That's where, thank you. All that time you're going through that anecdote, I was like, where is this going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, but the, the, they, they toned down the Russian flags. I didn't see a single Russian flag there, um, but mm. they did sell some. They did sell some merchandise, including base. Cause it's really sunny, so I was in the market for a baseball cap. But the only baseball caps they had had enormous Russian imperial eagles on the front. I thought I'd better not go out wearing that. Not in, <laughs> not in this climate. Um, so yeah, that that would uh, that that little anecdote was sort of tangentially related to the flag of France, uh, one of my favourites. And, of course, the other one is the flag of Ukraine. Um, I've, I've got a whole section on flags of the current conflict coming up. But um, this uh, the flag of Ukraine certainly ticks all the boxes in terms of simplicity, a base of law of tincture, uh, and is instantly recognised. And it isn't so also those colours are associated with really positive things as well. I think mm -hmm. like the psychology of those colours, someone I was reading somewhere or someone's telling me that actually that kind of yellow, it seems really like. So when you see that flag, you actually get a very kind of positive emotion, I think, that, that comes with that, <coughs> that that probably helps, you know, with garnering kind of sympathy uh, and empathy for them. I mean, it's just a really positive flag. Uh, mm. Like in in the psychology of the colours, but anyway, carry on. Mm. So, those are some good flags. So, in no particular order, I thought we'd look at some uh, some bad flags. Um, the one on the top left is, in my opinion, the worst national flag. That's the flag of Belize. So it's really bad because it's just so complicated. Because it has that it it has that coat of arms on it. Um, then in the top right, you've got oh, that, that that is a I can't remember what Liberia is divided into, but but um, that's the flag of the uh, of the G River G E E. If that's G or G, I'm not sure. Um, but all of the state flags of Liberia look like they were drawn by a five year old. I, I'm so glad you said that. I was going to say, is that seriously an adult? I mean, is that an actual flag? Because that is yeah. absolutely shite. I mean, yeah. there's absolutely <laughs> no doubt about the fact that that is a bad flag. And, yeah. and not only not only it, it fails in in the law of tincture, and there, there's no contrast here. Here, so I don't even you can't see my mouse pointing there. So no one doing that. But you, the fact that you got the, then the Liberian flag flag in the top corner, which is so garishly in contrast with the, it's just just really bad. Yeah, yeah, because because the flag of Liberia isn't too bad a flag. Obviously, it's based on the stars and stripes. Yeah. Because Liberia, um, free town, meant, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was meant to be a sort of antidote to slavery and colonialism. It was, it was, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, but but you know, heavily dependent on the on the USA. So the flag is basically the American flag with one star. Mm. Uh, but but yeah, all of the uh, county flags of. Liberia look looks something like that. The, 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 they are very much the black sheep of uh, the vexillogical world. Mm. Um, on the bottom left, I don't mean to single out West Virginia in particular. It looks like a cl clown. Well, yeah. Um, that, that's but, just a red... Yeah, anyway, carry on. Yeah, but a lot of the... Uh, flags of the individual states of the USA are absolutely terrible. Um, uh, they're, they're sort of coat of arms on a bedsheet uh, type flags where they've gone, oh, we need a flag. Oh, I just get the coat of arms, slap it on a, on a field. That'll work. Um, I think I've singled out West Virginia because it's mostly white and you've got that sort of gold... I don't, don't know what you'd call that, but that, that gold pattern in the middle, which is set on white, 
and it's got State of West Virginia written on it. Um, I, I know that there are campaigns in a lot of American flags to have better flags. I, I think Utah was the most recent one, um, and it's now got a beehive on it. Um, and it's a it's a horizontal tricolor, and the uh, uh, lines for divisions are meant to represent uh, mountain ranges. It looks a lot, lot, lot better than the last one, but of course there are people campaigning against it, possibly because they don't like change or they see anything new as quote unquote woke. Um, so yeah, the, the, if it, I, I, I would advise if you are American and you live in a state with a terrible flag, just try and make some sort of noise about it because you 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 won't be alone in 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 wanting to in wanting to change your flag and especially if you live in a state with a with a with if you live in one of the more sparsely populated states i was going to say wyoming but wyoming's flag isn't too bad um yeah if you make a if you make a bit of noise you, you will find other people who want to change the flag just try and learn a bit of flag design because um, uh, one state flag that's particularly, and always has been particularly problematic, is is the uh, uh, the flag of Georgia. Because for a long time, Georgia was essentially the original Confederate flag. Oh, I haven't even got onto Confederate flags. I, I love talking about them. Um, so it was the original stars and bars. So horizontal tricolor, uh, red white, red, blue canton, ring of stars, one for each state of the, Confe of the Confederacy. So Georgia used that flag with the state seal, with the state seal in the middle of the ring of stars. And, you know, anyone decent went, hang on a minute, the, the, there's Confederate imagery and there's just having a Confederate flag. So they tried to replace it and it was replaced around 2005, I think, I'm probably wrong there, but with one of the worst flags I have ever seen. Um, it had a gradient on it. Um, it had, you know, state of Georgia, then a motto, and then at the bottom were five individual flags. So it had flags on the flag. It was utterly, utterly terrible. So I think they, I think they went back to um, uh, to how it was earlier. Uh, yeah, they did. Um, so that that's the flag you're talking about there. I think yeah. there's a bunch of flags at the bottom. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Classic. It's still, it? good job. Yeah. So what's word, that fourth, fourth one on on the screen? Then is that another? Ah, the fourth one is the flag of Haiti. And there's, and there's quite a nice little story there, because um, the flag of Haiti used to look like that, but without the seal in the middle. Um, uh, but that's very, very similar to a European flag, but the flag of Liechtenstein. I was just going to say, the only one I could think is Liechtenstein. Oh, yes. I'm glad I got that. Um, so what happened is that um, at the 1936 Olympics... Uh, there were competitors from Haiti and from Liechtenstein, and they met each other at the opening ceremony where they all carried flags, and they realised, we've got the same flag. Well, that's no good. That's no good. So Liechtenstein went back and stuck a crown on it. Uh, they stuck a crown on theirs, and Haiti went back and just... That looks to me like... Uh, they just got a JPEG with with their uh, with their coat of arms on, so they they didn't even do anything to give that seal a nice background. They just stuck it on a white rectangle, um, so so that that's why I think that's a terrible flag because they could have done something to make it different from from Liechtenstein, uh, but that's what they chose to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. Right. So uh, the next bit 
out of my slides are, are on um, the Ukraine conflict and we're going for nearly an hour. So I think that'd be a, that'd be a good time to to go on to them unless you've got any questions. Yeah, yeah no, go for it. No, go for it. Sure. I, I, there, there, there was a question about the <coughs> Japanese flag. There's a question about the French flag, actually. So mm -hmm. the, the, does the French flag refer to, do the colours refer to anything? Uh, is there any meaning in those those colours? Um, like it, it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's almost like a backronym where th th this happens quite a lot with flags. It, colours are sort of handed down through the generations and then people put meaning to them later and with the French flag. Um, I don't know if you're, you've ever seen the uh, the painting uh, Liberty Leading the People. I can't remember who it's by, but um, you've got Lady Liberty standing with a bunch of revolutionaries holding a flag and uh, the flag stained with blood and that's where the red comes from and um, it's, it's cut out near... Um, uh, on the on the hoist side on the left side and that's when you can see the sky through it um yeah there it is uh yeah oh but uh, but it's not stained with blood or uh, i'm thinking of something else but um yeah it, some people have said you know it's because that often happens with a flag red is associated with blood and it usually means war and a fight and blue is associated with the sky basically so it's like openness and being clear and that so i don't think it's written down for certain what the colors of the french flag stand for but people have attributed them to to things but 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 like i say it's a bit like it, it it's it's a bit of a backronym type thing they ascribe a meaning when the meaning isn't necessarily there anyway so uh, this bit, uh, I've done a little presentation on the flags of the war in Ukraine. Um, first one is the Ukraine flag uh, there. Oh, and I've just I've just realised that uh, on top of the flagpole there yeah, is the... It's got the trident. Uh, yes, it's got the trident or uh, uh, tr tr trism, trism, I think it's called in Ukrainian. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was doing some reading on that and... Um, the trident is one of those symbols that's been handed down over generations, like I was just talking about. I think it first appeared in like the 11th century or something like that. And people have never been entirely sure what it is. It, 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 it's obviously some people said it's a trident, you know, like Neptune's trident. Other people have said that um, we're looking at it the wrong way up and it's in fact a falcon diving. Um, so yeah, and we've also talked about, yeah, go on. Well, no, I was just, yeah, and actually it has been incorporated. Some you sometimes see some flags trying to incorporate mm. the trident as well, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, we've already talked about what the colors mean and how it's well, we positive. haven't. So, the color, so well, apparently, the for the flag of Ukraine, the color, the blue at the top represents the sky, and the yellow represents the crops. Of the you know fields of uh, of crops and so that is very emblematic or it, yeah it, oh, there you go yeah yeah but I don't think that anyone intended that yeah is it, is it back one of these kind of uh, post hoc kind of ra mm. rationalizations almost an eti etiological story uh, as we might say but yeah mm. yeah absolutely so yeah it looks like a f um you know, a, a field of uh, wheat, I think that's meant to be. Um, <coughs> uh, there we are. Uh, the trident first appeared uh, in the Kievian Rus 10th century. Yeah, yeah, that's that's roughly what I've read. And the trident in the middle of the flag, yeah, specifically uh, Ukrainian army flag. Um, ah, yeah, there, the we go. there we go. And you can see how much it means to people. So this is uh, a video that was taken in uh Kherson, if i'm saying yes, that right it so, is uh, Kherson, yeah 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 yep. so so that city was uh liberated relatively recently and this is a video uh, of a lady who'd um who'd, who who'd buried her flag and uh obviously with the city being liberated she was happy to dig it up again and 
and unfurl it. Um, but I think that's a great example of what the flag can can mean to people. Um, that one especially. Yeah, and, because... and that's an interesting idea because actually that the Ukrainian flag uh, has, will probably mean so much more to people now than it ever has done, you know, to those people and to the world. It's like one of the things I said right at the beginning of the war, I, I wrote an article, I think back in, either at the very end of February, bear in mind it was less than a week into the war or something like the beginning of March or sometime pretty soon to the beginning of the war. And I said, if one of the intentions of Putin is to wipe Ukraine off the face of the earth, he's absolutely failed because there are more flags being like threat. They were projecting a flag on the Eiffel Tower, on like House of Parliament, and everything like this. So they were just everyone, the Ukrainian flag was everywhere. And it, and it became to represent much more than it previously had done. And for the people in Ukraine, it would undoubtedly mean much more to them now than possibly they'd ever, ever, you know, you know, given before. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and I would say now, yeah, everyone around the world knows what the Ukrainian flag is and, you know, know knows a little bit about Ukrainian identity so so yeah 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 that's certainly backfired if the intention was to basically subjugate ukraine so yeah Putin certainly failed in in that sense um interesting uh graybeard says that it could represent that sorry going back to the trident could represent yeah. an anchor i never thought it could represent yeah. an anchor but yeah, yeah 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 it could be it could be um th this this is a photo um i took on holiday in france because you know whilst everyone was taking pictures of the scenery and the architecture. I was taking pictures. Isn't that of funny? Like, sorry, I'm interrupting, but I know exactly what that means. Just all you've done yeah. is put put four colours in a row, and I know exactly what's going on there. That's fascinating. Exactly. Exactly. And what I like to think with this is that, for me anyway, this is a Polish flag on top of the Ukrainian flag, and the Ukrainian flag is done with tape. The Polish flag is done with paint. So it's obviously been done by two different people. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so what I think happened there is that the Ukrainian flag has come first and then a Polish person's come along and gone, oh, let's have a bit of solidarity, but I'll yeah. put our flag on top. Yeah, yeah. Obt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the, but for me, this image is just illustrates the power of simple flag design because, like you say, that's just four stripes and you look at it and you instantly know what that means yeah so yeah absolutely and then we got uh yeah the flag of russia um and the, the, there's there's so many things that surprised me about this flag um one is the horizontal tri trickle which is very european and if russia wanted to say right we're not european they'd have a different design um, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, it, it, it's it's the Dutch flag with the stripes in a different order. Because um, long story short, uh, Peter the Great, when he was Tsar, or maybe just before he was Tsar, um, he went off on a tour of Europe and he learned about you know modern things like uh, you know gun making and warfare and shipbuilding and that kind of that kind of thing. And when he got back, he realised, oh, actually, we need a flag. Tell you what, what if we take the Dutch flag and we shift the stripes so the red that's at the top goes to the bottom, the white that's in the middle goes to the top, and the blue that's at the bottom goes to the middle, so everything's shifted up one. And to me, that's just... <laughs> It's not a great design because you've got an edge which is completely white, so it disappears in a you know un under a cloudy sky. Um, the law of tincture, where, you know, when when Peter the Great was around, was definitely you know well understood and respected, and that's now going against the law of tincture because you've got red on blue, and um, yeah, it, it's just. It's basically a stolen design that's been adapted as, you know, adopted as the Russian flag for hundreds of years. And it just really surprises me because it's it's not a good flag. It's not a good design. And it's not at all Russian. 
so why they use it i've i've no idea i think it's a very interesting one so that's the russian flag and th th this is one of my favorite slide transitions that i do because in, in the days of the soviet union uh, you, you've got there 15, 15 flags for 15 of the Soviet republics. And it always strikes me how, how similar they are. They are the same basic flag. So you've got the Russian one on the top left and the Ukrainian one next door to it. And they are almost identical, but the blue stripe is in a slightly different place. It's the two wave ones that get me. I mean, really? Like, that's rubbish. Yeah, it, it, they're, they're very 80s leisure centre, those flags. Um, yeah, but so so not only are they all pretty much the same design, they're all the same ratio. So, you know, it, for me, it's very militaristic. It's very, you know, left, right, left, right, keep everything in check, keep it all the same. And then when they became independent, they all became independent countries. The flags changed to that. And there you've just got a huge array of, of, of colours, of ratios, of symbols. Yeah. And it went from them all having the hammer and sickle on uh, to having all different symbols. So you've got crescent moons there for Islam. You've got crosses for Christianity. You've got the Xbox single symbol. Ah, on yeah, one yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's one of my favourite flags. That's, that's the flag of Kyrgyzstan there. And what that is, is um, have you ever seen a yurt, those like really big Central Asian round yeah. tents? Yeah. Well, within the middle, you've got uh, two sets of beams that cross over. And if you were to lie in the middle and look up, that's what you'd see. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, that's 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 the flag of that's the flag of Kyrgyzstan, the Xbox logo, as yeah, everyone yeah. calls it. You've got the uh, Georgia flag there with the uh, with the red cross. Now, hmm. someone's asking about the flag of Genoa, which is uh, I, I don't know really anything about this, but saying it's got a big. Obviously, you've got the yeah. English St George's cross, and and but the the question was, you know, it, it's something to do with, with pirates, and you know, why is it? So where are we up here? Um, I'll, I'll find it. But can you tell us about the uh, the Genoa flag then? A little bit, a little bit. Yes, it's the cross of St. George. And of course, everyone thinks that's English. But what you've got to remember about St. George, he wasn't English. He was sort of given to the English. Um, I can't remember who, but I, I think it was a pope. Uh, when, oh, the English haven't got a patron saint. St. George, he'll do. Uh, but that was done to that was done with a lot of people and places, you know, including Barcelona. If you've ever seen the flag of Barcelona or the club crest of uh, uh, FC Barcelona, that's got a St George's cross on it. Um, and uh, Sardinia, I think, has got a St George's cross. Um, so, so yeah, I I I don't specifically know why Genoa has a St George's cross, but I I mean, my guess is that St George would be the the patron saint of patron saint of Genoa. Um, yeah, because because that's kind of a hard thing to to kind of get your head around it because because you're used to um, if someone is like a patron saint of someone, you would expect them to have something to do with it like St David was actually from Wales St Patrick did at least go to Ireland obviously St George uh, St Andrew didn't go to Scotland he was a, a you know disciple of Jesus and St George killed a dragon uh, and, and and was from the Middle East somewhere I forget where Turkey um Turkey Turkey there you go <coughs> but would never have gone anywhere near England uh, but is associated with England um, because he was given to England. So, 
Well, the, the Wikipedia says the St George's flag, a red cross on a white field, was adopted by England and the City of London in 1190 for their ships entering the Mediterranean to benefit from the protection of the Genoese fleet. The English monarch paid an annual tribute to the Doge of Genoa for this privilege. So Ooh. it might have something to do. So there oh, could I be a bit. Of... I did not know that. That's, that's some good knowledge. Um, so, so, so yeah, you, you've got there the flag of the flag of Georgia, and uh, after they became independent, the um, uh, flag of Georgia was a sort of maroon colour, a sort of red wine colour, um, and the Canton was uh, black and white. It was kind of an uninspiring flag, whereas they've gone for a sort of St George's cross on steroids there. Uh, but that was adopted after the Rose Revolution. Um, so it's it's very much a symbol of of uh, certainly independence from Russia, that flag anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, so 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 I just love how you go from um, all the flags the same to them being completely different. Uh, because you know that's the that's the reality. Uh, obviously, Russia would don't want it like that way. But you know, if 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 your flag's different, you're trying to say that your country's different, basically. Mm. Um, yeah. So so that's the transition of the old to the new. Uh, now and now this one I find fascinating. Is that an actual? Is that an actual flag? It's it's not really a flag as such. It, it, it's it's more of a ribbon. Um, oh I'm, right, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. What, I'm just wondering if you've seen it before. I have. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. the uh, is it? Well, it's George's ribbon. What's it called? That's that's um, right. That's yeah. right. It, it, it's it's the ribbon of St George. It's a very very uh, pro Russian symbol. I'm pretty sure it's banned in Ukraine. Uh, I would imagine so. Yeah, but it, it's it's been a symbol of Russia, and especially the Russian military for um, for centuries. So, so you've got Catherine the Great there. Sorry, you normally see it in in ribbons like that. Uh, yes, or, yes, or or just as a as a across you know arms and whatnot in the army. Yes, yes. So, so there you've got Catherine the Great on the left. She's she's wearing a a, a sash of it. And on the right there, you've got my mate, Tsar Nicholas II, Thick Nick, as his mates call him. Um, he's he's, he's uh, uh, got, a little, got a little medal. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a very potent symbol of, um, of the Russian military and Russian nationalism. So if you ever see it, that's what it is. Um, you know, could, could, and I'm surprised that something more like that isn't the Russian flag, to be honest, because because that's that's very Russian and that's very distinctive that that that, that orange those orange and black stripes. Mm. So there we are, a little bit of uh, food for thought. Ah, and then we get on to the um, oh, how do you describe them? The self self proclaimed People's Republics. So this one's this one's uh, uh, Luhansk, and they obviously had things other than flag design on their mind because <laughs> they've 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 written down what they are. Um, they've added an imperial eagle, and together with you know the old imperial crown and scepter and a coat of arms. Um, although later on they realised, oh, actually. It'd probably be better without all the other stuff. Let's just let's just have a trick it all. Absolutely. Um, but but again, then you've got that light blue to dark blue, which is it is not good. No, no. But but but, but it's obvious what they're trying to communicate because this is the flag of Russia, but the top is a different color. So they're obviously saying we are Russia, but a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, and 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 um, uh, Donetsk, very similar story. Um, they produce th their first flag, more or less exactly the same sort of thing as Luhansk, really. Um, they they wrote what they were, had a um, coat of arms, 
and then decided to get rid of that. It's so, really interesting because when you flash those flags up, it's going back to the psychology of the Ukrainian flag. As soon as you flash up a flag that has black on it, my my literally my my kind of mood or my brain just went. Mm. Mm. Do, do you know what there was? There was a there was a kind of visceral reaction to that that was more negative than positive, mm. and I, I find that interesting. So if I was designing a flag, unless I was an autocratic despot, like I wouldn't be throwing black into that flag. I don't think uh, just a bit of psychology of the colours or yeah. like a colour there. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll, we'll get onto some pretty major yeah psychology in a minute. Um, there's there's also I. I I don't, I don't know what these people were thinking. Um, this... You can't draw that at school very easily, right? No, no. Um, let me let, let me just double check what this is from a note. Um, yeah, this is the flag of uh, Russian occupied Zaporizhia, if I'm saying that right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 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 I'm guessing that um, uh, the rifles and the uh, and the bow and arrow are symbols. They're at a very odd angle. To me, those guns are upside down. This is, um, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. Can I just add in, like, Jerome has just said this, the uh, the flag of uh, Angola. Now, mm. do you know what? I think it's a really good point from Jerome. I look at that flag, and do you know what I think? Some kind of autocratic regime in a computer game. Like, I'd imagine, yes. like, that's a kind of, to me, I've not seen the Yango. I don't recognise that as a flag particularly. Uh, and so I would just think that is that is the bad guys in a computer game that have some, or something like, that's a flag you'd expect on Hunger Games or something like that. But it's amazing that you associate these colours and, and designs with certain feelings and emotions and ideas. I think it's mm. really interesting when you investigate your own thought processes when you see something like that. Great, great call, Jerome. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and the thing about the flag of Angola, basically any flag with weapons on it, is that you can, you can use it to date uh, when something important happened. So the flag of Angola has a machete on it, so I'm pretty sure that um, the machete was a prominent weapon in their in their war of independence from, uh, from right. Portugal. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice one. Good knowledge there. Yeah. Um, similar thing with Mozambique having the AK-47 on it. <laughs> but, 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 um, Has it got an AK-47 on a flag? Yeah. Yep. AK-47 with the bayonet attached. That's um, that's, oh, that's the one yeah, that that's everyone nice brings and, up. Nice and positive. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, people always go, "Oh, yeah, don't you see the flag of Mozambique?" And I go, yes. So is that um, that? So they have they got a newer flag? Is that the older flag then? Oh, I d I didn't know that. Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, yeah, that, that that that's the old one. That's got the old coat of arms, and you can see the AK seven AK forty seven okay. on it, including um, a hoe for farming and a book for for knowledge. It's got everything, like death, food, knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll let you get back on that. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm always happy to talk about the flag of Mozambique. Um, and this is this is another one. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think this is um, uh, the flag of, uh, let me be very, very professional, um another occupied region it is oh I'm, I'm thinking what that is is that going to be oh, i don't know is that Kherson or uh, i don't that, know yeah that um i would imagine that's what it is um uh yeah so so it follows um uh, the very that's much not. the same the same way as uh, donetsk and um Luhansk, in that it's the name of the country, well, well not country, but the, the, the name of what they want it to be, um, and uh, the Russian imperial eagles on there, and a uh, cornucopia. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that follows um, what we've seen before. And then you were talking about psychology, Wagner's flag, is just oh, yeah. it, it's it's um 
a lesson in intimidation because you've got everything on there. It's mostly black. So, you know, initially strike terror. Then there's red, color of blood. Um, a skull, you know, in classic, are we the bad guys? Type yeah, thing. I was going to mention the old Mitchell and Webb <laughs> sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah. And, and, and they've even got the name of it written in, in uh, Cyrillic and in English. Just to just to make sure they terrify everyone, um, and and I'm pretty sure that's meant to be a you know a rifle scope sight as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just as well there no more because uh, their flag was meant to their flag was meant to terrify definitely. Uh, what have I got next? Ah yeah, so 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 this is this is the last one on my show. Uh, Recognize that one? No. Uh, now, 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 I find this very interesting. This is this is the flag of uh, people who call themselves Free Russia. So right, okay, yeah. So, so these guys are anti anti war, anti Putin, and what they've done is that they've taken the Russian flag and replaced the red with white, with the idea that red signifies blood and white signifies peace. So. They're now going peace, blue, peace. So this is nice colours. White is a nice colour, means peace. Blue is a nice colour. Um, although, I mean, we don't tend to hear much from the free Russia people for, you know, probably very obvious reasons. Um, but I just thought it was quite a nice, a nice positive one to end on. Uh, yeah, if I was to design a flag, cause just because I like to be a bit of a dick, I would go, uh, like, I'm going to have white in the middle, sandwiched by white, a white stripe and a white stripe underneath. And just <laughs> go, and it fails on everything. It's just just a white flag. Oh, no, yeah. I surrendered. Oh, no, whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. Anyway, car carry on. Well, that, that, that that's pretty much it for, for, for the um, uh, flags I had I had to show. Um, Obviously, plenty, plenty of other stuff to talk about. I mean, my my, my favourite white flag story comes from the American Civil War because the Confederates just provided a car crash lesson in how not to do flags. Um, because their first attempt at a national flag was the Stars and Bars. So they started off with the flag of Austria, so red, white, red and put a, a blue canton in the top left and then had a ring of stars for each of the Confederate states, originally seven, uh, 13 at most. And they were going into battle with this flag. And if you think what battles would have been like then, there's, you know, gunpowder going off, it's noisy and, you know, you you know, your leg might get blown off or whatever, and you need to know who your side is. So so you're looking through all the haze trying to see your side's flag. So do you go to the red and white striped flag with uh, stars and blue in the top left or the red and white flag with stars right. and blue in the top left? <laughs> right. So, so, you know, you can see the problems there. So then they went, oh, okay, um, and, and all different, um, you know, companies and armies and whatever had, had, had their own flags. And the most popular one was the battle flag of the Army of North Virginia, which was a square. So uh, can I just say what you were saying is that kind of one there with the, with the original in that top left? Yeah, 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 top left. So, oh, yeah, if you just keep that up. So, so the one to the right of it, that's the battle flag of the army of North Virginia. So they started to use that. And they thought, oh, that's good design. It's just, it's sort of the same, but different. It's still red, white, and blue. It still has the stars on it, but in, it's in a configuration that's completely different to the stars and stripes. So they started to use that one. And they came up with the stainless banner. So second row, four in 
the flag that's mostly white with the um, diagonal cross on it. Uh, and the one next to it actually is it is it flying? And it's, it's it's just hilarious when people try to claim that the American Civil War and the Confederacy wasn't about race because they made the flag mostly white to represent the superiority of the white race. Right. But but they had a problem marching into battle with that flag because they were going into battle with a flag that was mostly white. So it created all sorts of uh, issue, issues because, of course, people thought they were surrendering. And it's like, they're surrendering already? That was quick. Um, so to try and get around that issue, uh, yep, and it is there. So it's top row, five in. They came up with the blood-stained banner. So they took the mostly white one, the stainless banner, and they just stuck a red stripe on the end. Um, but that was only in action for about three or four months before the war was over anyway. But uh, what I, the, the story I like is um, the final flag of the Confederacy when um, uh, the final Confederate army surrendered. They needed a white flag. And the only thing they had to hand was a dishcloth. And that dishcloth is now in a museum somewhere. So, um, yeah, the... the in reality, the final flag of the Confederacy was a dishcloth. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, that's that, and, and of course, I mean, people have asked about the Wehrmacht flag uh, that I'm sure you, the, you've you uh, got time to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's one of the things I say is that a good flag isn't necessarily a nice flag. Um. Yeah, so 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 I so Hitler himself, an art student. Yeah, yeah, you got a nice mix of Nazi flags there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and 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 he he knew a lot of the design principles that I've been talking about. So the Nazi flag, basal rule of tincture, it's simple, three colours, and he even did things like um, uh, if 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 you notice on the first flag in the second row, the, the swastika is sort of, it's sort of flat. It's more like a square. Whereas in the flag of the Third Reich, it's at an angle. And he did that because that looks more exciting. And- Interesting. Yeah, and, and, and the disc uh, on the flag that Hitler designed is slightly to the side just to make it a bit, again, to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more exciting. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's one hell of a flag um, in 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 more ways than one, the flag, the flag of the Third Reich. Well, it is. It's incredibly evocative. It's, as you say, simple and just but it's instantly, you know, and it's associated, obviously, with so much that it just it does a good job of being a flag. Uh, um, what, what's the history between, behind the swastika being on there, which is a symbol that you wouldn't associate with? Do you know? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not entirely sure about the history of the, of the swastika. I think it comes from sort of sort of ancient Eastern religions. I think if you look at, I think a map of Thailand or somewhere like that, um, uh, temples are marked on the map with swastikas. But they're a lot more, you, you know, they're a lot different to a Nazi swastika. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I think that's where the Nazis got it from, but I'm probably wrong there. Yeah, so that that is that is a swastika as per the, uh, you know, the Eastern religion, uh, as understood. But uh, transition from auspicious swastika to despised swastika began in the late 19th century, uh, apparently the story. Uh, begins following the archaeological investigation, blah blah blah. So uh, that's something I, I guess I'm going to have to have have to look into afterwards. It was uh, it was interesting. It was mentioned actually. I'm reading a book by um, uh, Madeleine Albright called Fascism, and she she talks about that. She does actually talk a little bit about the flag, uh, but I can't remember what she said actually, uh, which is a really good book uh, nonetheless. Even though I can't remember <laughs> that bit, but, yeah, but yes, yeah. so. Uh, so any other flag um, sort of nuggets, anecdotes, uh, advice? 
Oh, flag nuggets anecdotes advice. Um, well, what, one thing I would say that if if, if you're traveling, um, a little um, a little desk flag makes a really good makes a really good souvenir. Um, that, that that that's certainly that's certainly what my grandfather did because some of the flags in that collection are like sixty years old or something like that, and they're they're still just about holding up. I, um, do you know what? Uh, similar to that, Tom. Well, I used to have a camper van uh, that I bought off eBay. I bought two camper vans off eBay. This one uh, we we took me and my partner before we had the kids. So it's like thirteen years ago or something. We drove around Europe. And because Europe's awesome to drive around because you can go in one day, you can dip into like three countries. And my, my like everywhere I went, I had to get a sticker to go on the back. I had to get every nation sticker. And then if I could get stickers of like the cities I went to or whatever. And it was like collecting as many stickers as I could. It was such an awesome collection. And when I had to scrap the camper van, I was like, no, can I just like peel off oh, the back yeah. of the camper van? But yeah, that's a nice yeah. collection. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, my advice with flags is, like almost anything, ask questions about it. Like, because because if if you ask if any country's flag, why is it like that? You will find out something interesting. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's SK, I stayed at a completely white hotel in Nepal with a black swastika on the top of the roof. <laughs> uh, very mixed feelings. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, and what what would be your uh, if anyone has any questions by the way get them in now uh, please do what would be your um favorite flag in, in the world if you haven't already told us well I, i've 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 already said um republic of ireland oh yeah of course um, you did yeah 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 uh, because because of um the symbol of, the symbolism of it and and how it's it's an attempt to you know make a bridge between communities um, but yeah, there's it's, it's, it's plenty of flags I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of. Um, but it, 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 in a way, it's kind of hard to pick. It's kind of hard to pick absolute favourites just, just, just because of what flags are to me. Um, that, that, that they're not something to be, you know, admired and lauded over because, because, because that's something I get a bit of the, be in my bonnet about when people sort of put flags on a pedestal i mean like yes they do symbolize certain things but at the end of the day it's just a piece of cloth um so you know when 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 you because you, you, if you take the american flag code it can get absolutely ridiculous that there, there, there are um you know there's ways for how you're supposed to fold the flag and how you're supposed to dispose of it if it gets damaged, and it's just like that's it, it's just it's just so over the top. Um, but that but isn't that interesting because you know that goes to talk about how flags become much more than just flags and they become representations of ideas, right? Uh, as we've talked about, like you can look at the Nazi flag and say, you know, as someone here says, you know, I really like the Nazi flag as a kind of design, in, in all the things you were kind of saying, but actually, I hate everything that obviously was done by the Nazis, so you know, that's a bit of a difficult situation there, but but you can you can appreciate a flag but then for many people it's much more than the flag right and so therefore it gets this kind of sanctity there's a sac mm. there's a sacredness to to a flag perhaps that that is as you and i might as complete skeptics go you know it's just the cloth and blah 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 but but people say no no it's more than that it is everything we kind of stand for as a people uh and i guess you know there's just i, I wonder if there's a you could trace people's political allegiances along with how they might see something like that. So with with people who really love tradition and purity. Um, so if you look at the psychology of Jonathan Haidt and people like that, they associate conservatism, small c conservatism with, you know, much greater value, value for things like tradition and purity, then a flag takes on like it's traditional. It's, 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 it, you talked about people not liking change earlier with changing a flag. It's like, this is who we are. It's pure. And it's, you know, you can't do anything bad to that. Whereas a liberal might be like, yeah, whatever, don't really care. It's just a kind of like, so I, yeah, it's just interesting ideas to go along with psychology 
in how we approach flags as, as a symbolic thing. Mm. And one thing I haven't talked about yet is um, pride flags. Is um, I, I, I was at Liverpool Pride a couple of months ago, and that's just fantastic for events all just like me because there are so many pride flags, um, you know, for all the different, uh, you know, sexualities and identities and whatever. And one of the things I really like um, about pride flags is how democratic they are because there's no central body that says, right, okay, um, uh, this year the rainbow flag is going to look like this and uh, the trans pride flag is going to look like this. It, it, it's someone will come up and go, uh, you know, I'm asexual or non-binary or whatever. So, so I think the flag for our community should look like this. And then other people will go, yeah, okay, that's good. I'll have that. Or they might go, nah, I don't like it. So, so because there's no one going, right, this community have got this flag and this community have got this flag, people, um, you know, adopt flags as they see fit. Just but as consensus, so it gets agreed upon by consensus, consensus I take it. It's kind of evolved yeah. through time. It's a, but I was going to ask you, like, why is it that sexualities have flags? And then you answered it before I got to answer it, uh, ask it, which was community, right? It's a representation of a community. Um, so what other, I, I don't know, I don't mean to say weird, because um, I'm talking in orthodoxy of like country. And so therefore, if everything's not a country, it's weird if it has a flag. But what other, what other non kind of geographical, I suppose, uh, instances uh, do, you, do you see flags in? I know you talked about a person having a flag and yeah um, corporations usually have flags and corporate flags are usually terrible if you've ever seen a building um, that flies a corporate flag it, it, it will have it, it's usually white you know, it will have a company logo and the company name written on it and it's one of those you know like I was talking about earlier you look up and it goes what's that Oh, I don't care. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's 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 a famous shipyard ship shipyard not that far from where I live, um, and I went to um, uh, uh, and it's where they built the um, the uh, RSS David Attenborough. Remember the whole the whole boating McBoat face thing? Yeah. Um, and they named one of the little research submarines boating McBoat face. So I stood next to it and got my picture taken. Um, but it's camel led, right? So, so that was a thought formed for the merger of two companies, and camel and lead are names. And camel is not spelt C A M E L, but their flag has a camel on it. Right. it drives me nuts. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Love that. Uh, someone was uh, mentioning the aboriginal flag uh, of oh. australian Ab aboriginal flag as well as the uh flag that represents the ukrainian insurgent army uh, oh, so that's yeah, interesting yeah. so they're, they're quite similar there in in their colors and i was talking about how the red and black uh, i seem to me fairly kind of negative but he was seeing them in a different light in the context of those flags and not seeing them as negative colors mm. so then just getting your well, head around that well, so. well red and black are also um the uh colors of anarchism if you've ever seen the anarchist yes. flag the the, yeah. the diagonals um so yeah, I'm. I'm really not sure why. I the... think I think that's why I'm getting that vibe actually, because um, I, I'm playing computer games and things, and you see stuff like that, and you just associate. Like that's why I mentioned things like Hunger Games, and I, I know anarchy is kind of the opposite of authoritarianism, but it's this kind of uh, I don't know. It's that vibe that I don't see as like totally positive and embracing. It's it's got oh, that no. yeah, the red and black there. But anyway, sorry, no. I'm bumbling on. I mean, maybe I've played too much Civ, but I always see anarchy as a bad thing. Right, fair uh, enough. So, uh, whenever you change governments, you go into a state of anarchy, and you've got no economy for a turn. It's like, no, no, no that's a bad thing. You don't want that. Fair enough. Um, are there any other flag anecdotes or nuggets? While I just have a look through some of the questions. 
Um, flag anecdotes or nuggets? Um, What's the earliest of... flag? What's the earliest flag that we have knowledge of? You said the French one was the earliest sort of national uh, flag. I, I, I believe the earliest one that's been in continuous use is the flag of Denmark. Uh, right. I think that, that I think that's in Europe. That's been around since the fifteen hundreds, maybe. Um, uh, yeah. But in 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 terms of uh, how old they are, flags in some way go back to Roman times. Um, because because uh, they didn't have flags exactly, but they had sort of bits of cloth uh, hung off a hung off a pole, and those were called vexilla, which is where we get the word vexillology right. from. So yeah, f f flags and banners have been around for a for a long long time, but the whole concept of you know a simple flag um, as opposed to you know, a banner or a coat of arms, that's relatively new. We're, we're, we're talking, you know, being around for centuries rather than being, yeah. being around for millennia. Um, so Mark B says, I live in Ohio, you're saying, every time I look at the US flag, I wonder which star represents Ohio. Then I realise the symbolism. We are <laughs> every star. It's very well done. Interesting. Mm. Good, good insight there. Um, what other flags are not? You've talked about Nepal. What other flags are not rectangular or perhaps square? Well, uh, in a, in a uh, amazing piece of serendipity, the flag of Ohio is, is not okay. It, it is not rectangular. It's um, it's got a dovetail at the end. It looks quite nice actually. The flag of Ohio. Um, you know, I'm going to have to find that now. Yeah, of course, of course, go for it. Um, uh, but any other national flags, or is it? No, is... no, no. There's, there's, there's no other national flags. Um, there's only two that I can think of that are square. Um, that is Switzerland and the Vatican City. Oh, one thing I didn't mention talking about the law of tincture, flag of the Vatican City, uh, because yellow on 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 white. There you go. There's a flag of uh, Ohio. Yeah, I'm going to get you Vatican City flag. Yeah, yeah, and because the because oh. um, yeah, yeah, because the Vatican has such an uh, abundance of wealth, an obscene abundance of wealth, they represent that by having the flag of the Vatican, having metal on metal, having gold and silver. Uh, if if you look at the cross keys. Um, one of them's gold, one of them's silver. So it's just... its It really is literally representing, like, money, like yeah. wealth. That's, yeah, exactly. That's, you know, you might ask, what would Jesus do? You know, like, <laughs> probably, probably, probably not that. You know, he'll be, he'll be throwing over the flag tables, wouldn't he? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. He'd, he'd, he'd take the hat off the Pope and go, what are you doing with this? <laughs> Chuck it on the floor. Yes. Um, nice one. Well, look, uh, I, oh, okay. Final question here from Jeroen. Uh, any notable city flags, any favorite sort of city flags? Um, yes, yeah, some city, this is why I get so annoyed about Liverpool not wanting a city flag. If you've ever been to Amsterdam, the flag of Amsterdam is really nice. It's, it, it, it's black and red, mostly. Um, Chicago's got a very nice flag. Uh, which is the one that's black and white and swirly? I think it's Brussels. Uh, let me just is that what that one ah. Amsterdam flag? Yep, that's the flag of Amsterdam. You like that one? That seems to me nuts. <laughs> that seems to be again. I just get a negative comment connotation from that. I just think yeah, it, that it's, makes it, me think evil. It's not the best color scheme, but compared to a lot of city flags, which is just a coat of arms. Right. On, um, uh, which is just a coat of arms on a on a on a on a bed sheet. That's that's really quite nice. And that's a Chicago flag. Yeah, so, that, so like that's that one. Chicago. Um, but yeah, but, but, because they have it and because they use it, it's it's everywhere. Oh, here, oh, here's a good one. Um, we talk about Russian flag. A lot of the Russian regional flags are really really weird. Um, so, uh, okay. 
how 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 are you with uh, spelling Zelesnogorsk? Yeah, pretty good. Because that's got a fantastic flag. Okay, so here we go. Zelesnogorsk flag. Yeah. Right, let's show that. It's going to be one of these. Tell me which one. Uh, the first one. What is go and what's going on with the second one as well? I don't radio, know. I don't know radio, what that is. radio, regional flags. I don't, that's another regional flag. Is that a beaver? Like a really strong, big beaver, so to speak. Oh, um, I'll, I'll, yeah. But, but, but can, can, can you see okay. what's at the bottom there? Someone's done a mashup of um, Zelesnogorsk and, and one of those Liberian flags. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I love uh, what the mashups you can get. But, but um, there's some sort of big nuclear research facility at Zelesnogorsk and their flag is a bear fighting an Apton. That is absolutely cool. Like, uh, okay, it's not easy to draw, so it fails like quite a few things. You've got a bit of red, yellow on red, so I'm not too cool, keen with that. But like, like a bear fighting with an atom is um, definitely uh, a cool idea. And the, the bear is literally splitting the atom. It, it, it's trying to tear the nucleus in half. And I love the way one of its paws is on an on, is on an electron <laughs> orbital. It's so cool. I've got I've got I've got a silly question from my mate Dave, who's always always good for a laugh here, which is why did Romania copy the chat flag of Chad? It's so annoying. Yeah, um, yeah. I I, I I I really need to look up the story there because I'm pretty sure. Well, no, flag but is that is that not? I assume Chad copied Romania. Well, maybe not. Maybe I thought he was being like facetious. But maybe Romania no, did no, copy no. Flag. Um, it, it, it's I, I, I'm pretty sure it's just one of those things where two countries have just ended up with more or less the same flag, but coming from completely di different directions. I'm pretty sure that the flag of Chad is basically the flag of France with right. yellow in the middle instead of white. And yeah, yeah, well, yeah, which is uh, yeah, what you said. So. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those unlucky coincidences, I guess. Um, I, I don't know if you can answer this. Adrian Warhays says, is a pennant often used in the States? So the pennant is one of those that tapers off into a triangle, isn't it? Just a yeah, long, yeah. thin triangle. So a pennant is that often used in the States, the same as a flag? Um, functionally, no. Um, but yeah, because I, 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 um, I've got family in the States and, and, and they're big they're big on sports and they have pennants for all the teams and they're often not made of uh, the same fabric that flags are made of they're sort of made of something like felt um so they're usually used for sports teams sometimes used as trophies i know in baseball if um a team wins their league they they, they win a pennant um so no that they're, they're not exactly the same um, I'm, 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 so I'm does, just, a, I'm, does a flag institute have like a rule for what is a flag? What can what can qualify as a flag? Um, I'd assume so. Um, yeah, uh, but what, 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 with the flag institute, the basic rule is if the flag institute recognises it, then it's official. And um, the flag of the county I'm from, Norfolk. Um, some guy did something very cheeky because um, Norfolk County Council had a flag, but there wasn't one for the actual county. And rather than going to the county council and saying, you know, I've designed this flag. Can we have it as a flag of Norfolk? Rather than doing that, he sent a petition to a load of local businesses and he, and he got a load of signatures and he sent it off to the Flag Institute and they went, yeah, that'll do. You can have your flag as a flag of Norfolk, completely bypassing what you're supposed to do, which is ask, you know, whatever regional body um, represents the area that the flag is supposed to represent. So maybe, maybe I should do that. Just just, just ask a load of uh, um, uh, business leaders <laughs> in Liverpool. Daniel, Daniel Moore says he loves the flag of Northumberland. Um, that looks nuts to me. Like the Northumberland flag, yeah, it, it, it's um, it reminds me of the sort of M uh, the MCC, the sort of Egan Crest thing. 
um because it's it's yeah because because that obeys all the laws it's it, it's pretty simple you've got um color on metal but yeah there's something about that color scheme which is to me it's i don't know it's a bit too bright it's it, it's, yeah. it's sort of sensory overload really okay final question for you uh random question what's your favorite micronation flag micronation okay um well not entirely sure what you mean by micronation so um, small island nation so, so not a big established i presume oh okay um uh the flag of kiribati is quite interesting because uh that, that, that's got uh that's got a bird on it I can, I can never remember the type of bird but um yeah a, a, a lot of the smaller flags are actually quite good um but 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 quite minimal in design so so narrow is 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 is, is quite clever um because um you you've you've got um the position of that star represents where Nauru is in relation to the equator. Ah. So, so, so that's pretty good. Although um, it does depend which way up you're looking at the world. Because I actually there, so. is, there is no up and down in space. Anyway, <laughs> uh, th 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 there you go. Um, right. Well, thank you very much, uh, I guess, unless there's anything else you particularly want to say or any last minute questions anyone has. Um, well, before I go, I should probably plug my podcast. Um, so so um, I do a podcast called Retrospecticus with my friend Gareth. So it's 20 minutes talking about an episode of Simpsons and then another 20 minutes talking about an important historical event. Uh, that occurred roughly when the episode was broadcast. So very first episode we do, Christmas 1989. So my bits on the death of Ceausescu. And then we follow everything that happened in the early 90s. So it's like fall of the Berlin Wall, um, that kind of stuff. The website is now working because it got hacked a little while ago and someone replaced everything with pictures of cats. It was really annoying. Um, oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to laugh, but yeah, uh, I know, I know, but uh, uh, and it's and it's not just history. So we also look at culture, like like early nineties video games, um, yeah, all, all all sorts of stuff. Um, some of it's quite prescient because there's an episode about Sinead O'Connor, um, who who sadly passed away. Uh, sixty one um, episode sixty one there, a yeah. streetcar named Sinead O'Connor. Mm -hmm. cool well uh that looks a, a kind of interesting mix of, of things a good vehicle i guess to to access history and ideas um since let's face it the simpsons have probably talked about everything in some <laughs> kind of left field way um uh okay well look thank you so much to tom for being on i just before we go and thank you for the active uh live a chat going on at the side really appreciate it all below uh just jerome what's your guilty pleasure flag so your last kind of flag that you you like but i know you said the californian oh, state yeah. flag yeah any 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 other guilty pleasure and i'll oh, show it flat flags that are so bad they're good um i'm trying to think i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna have to uh wimp out and say and say california Although there is a Russian regional flag, I'm trying to remember what it is, but it's got like almost a cardboard cutout of Jesus's face on it. I'm trying to remember what that one is. I love the fact I've just put in worst flags and in, into Google, right? And it, we we've come back up with that that one from Liberia. Oh, yeah. it's just like it's. Although that's a slightly better iteration than that one, which is just like child's drawing. But um, yeah, uh, there you go um uh goodness me there are some uh interesting flags on there so yeah. oh, oh actually my favorite guilty pleasure flag was um submitted when new zealand had a flag design con yes uh, contest. i remember this i remember uh, this yeah uh, carry on the laser kiwi one is that is laser with a z uh laser kiwi 
Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so what? Okay, leave us with the story of that. Well, it, it, it was it was um, quite. It's simple, even really. found its look. It's found its way to Russia-Ukrainian war. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, cool. Oh wow, that that's brilliant. So it's among so it's the been, New Zealand fighters, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's become like their unofficial battle flag. That, that yeah. that's amazing. Um, yeah, the the story behind that is is, is that you, the New Zealand flag is just a blue field. Union Jack and Canton and some red stars. It's almost the same as the Australian flag, apart from the stars are red instead of white. So in 2016, they designed uh, a new one, and it was um, a fern replacing the Union the Union flag. That was about it, and that flag was uh, rejected in a referendum you know, easily the worst referendum result of 2016. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and and they still have the, you know, the flag with the red stars. Um, but loads and loads of, you know, jokey entries were entered. And the one that's really captured people's imagination is the laser kiwi one. <laughs> Just, it's randomly brilliant. Excellent stuff. Nice one. Well, look, Tom, uh, thank you so much. Everyone check out Respect. Retrospecticus. Did I get that right? Retrospecticus. Retro yeah, sorry. Retrospecticus, of course. <laughs> Goodness me. Words, eh? Uh, Retrospecticus. Please check that out. Thank you, Tom, for coming on. And Tom is such a great supporter of ATP Geopolitics, my other channel, where I cover the Ukraine war, and it's kind of like taken over my life uh, quite a bit. Um, so thank you for supporting there, Tom. And, and uh Good luck um, talking uh, in, in your next talks. I know you're going to talk at, uh, possibly at QED and, and whatnot. So anyway, yeah, thank you so much for taking your time out. Thank you, everyone, in the in the chats. Stay on the line, uh, Tom. In the meantime, everyone, toodle pips, and thanks for uh, coming to have a little chat about flags. Cheers, everyone. See you later. <laughs>